So with the last box cutter 717.6, our goal was to focus on taper and getting it integrated with all of our tools while beginning the great unification process. I'm proud to announce with the release of box cutter 717.7, .7, we have furthered in our endeavors with this work and now it results in a more stable, cohesive, unified product that should be able to be used in a myriad of situations that couldn't be used before and allow for even more scenarios that you could compared to previously. We also went through an enhanced wedge to another level and I can't wait to show you guys what we've done for this latest release. So for this example, I'm using Blender 2.83.9 and I have box cutter 717.6 installed in order to use this version with the Maya theme as the older version for comparison. So I will tap into edit mode and we'll just right click to subdivide a couple of times. And I'm going to shift D, duplicate this cube over to the side, and we're just going to quickly jump over to knife. Notice that whenever I knife, it shows the wireframe whenever you're using it, so that way you can see what you're actually cutting. But also notice that the wireframe is showing for an object that isn't selected and isn't actually related to the operation at hand. In fact, if I go over here and I begin cutting this object, it will begin showing the wireframe for the other deactivated object that isn't even part of the equation at this time. And while this is something small, this was something that drove me crazy. So it's something that we sought to resolve. I'm going to select both of these and press Control C to copy them. And we'll minimize this blender and we'll paste them in this instance that's using box cutter 717.7, .7, currently in 2.92.0 alpha. And we will just do the same thing where we jump over to knife. And now you'll notice that knife only shows the wireframe for the singular object that you are focusing on. Sometimes I would be working and I would see the wireframe being shown for nearby objects and I would just find it to be distracting. I would get suddenly um, obsessed with the idea of dealing with its wireframes and going and cutting that one. But it was something that was never intended in the first place. So I'm proud to announce that that has been corrected. A few releases ago, we introduced a concept of a tool called Wedge. Right now I'm in box, but if I hold Alt and I roll the wheel, I can jump over to Wedge. And basically wedge is you drawing a line and then the second click is you bring it down and the third click is you applying it. And while that's not a whole lot of clicks, it is more clicks than people probably would want. So we always considered wedge to be a work in progress, despite it being a fairly functional tool and also working pretty nice, we always felt it could be better. So if we minimize this, we can now go over to the latest blender and I'm just gonna alt scroll up to wedge and we now see that wedge is actually just done in the form of a box so it's much easier now and you'll be able to draw these with one click in fact there's even more to it where you can draw wedges and even less clicks than you see me doing here however i wanted to just show you guys that a lot of work has actually went into wedge and expanding it previously i also talked about unification and how we want to unify our systems and so now i can show what that means if we were to draw a circle we can press w and we see that this circle is wedge, which is somewhat strange, but it's now a thing. If we draw an end gun, I'm just going to hold control and we'll just draw the quickest shape. And we can actually bring this in, but while it's extruding, we could press W in order to adjust the angle in which we are wedging. So this is very nice as well. On top of that, you can even go to something like custom where it's already set to center draw. But if we press W, we can now wedge using the custom cutter. So you can now wedge to your heart's content using box cutter. In addition to being able to wedge, you also have the same controls as before. For example, um, let's say I actually did not want to draw this way. I would just press period to change the axis point. We can just bring this in, press W, and we could even press shift tilde in order to rotate the shape inside while keeping the wedge respected. We could even press W in order to change the axis of the wedge. However, it may require that you be in the extrusion phase, but really whenever it comes to rotating the wedge and rotating shapes inside, this is where things can get confusing because shift R actually rotates the shape inside. And so what we're seeing here is actually a transformation level thing happening to the shape. So the shape is able to rotate inside while still respecting the formation of the shape that's actually building its form. So we'll just click to apply that. Uh, when it comes to wedge, there's more about it than just that. If we deselect, we can now draw wedges from make mode, which is also very nice. In fact, if we press W, we can flip the wedge and just instantly create nice little TPs. In addition to being able to draw it in make mode, you can press J while drawing to use it inside of 
join as well and it will unify with the surface. We'll do the same thing here. Just draw a shape, press J, bring it up, press W in order to flip it. And just like that, we're able to draw wedges without any difficulty. So the thing about box cutter is we always are trying to reduce the amount of clicks. So let's draw a cut. One click, release, drag, two clicks, we're done. Now, if we wanted to be faster, we could give it no depth and just click and just cut through, and that would activate something called laser cut, which will attempt to cut through the mesh. However, for the most part, it's one click, two click, you're done. However, as of box cutter 717.7, .7, that has changed. So now under shape, under laser cut depth, there's now a parameter for something called auto depth. And by turning this on, you can now begin drawing shapes and depth will be calculated based off of the longest edge, which can actually simplify your creation process quite a bit. In fact, you see me using it here with wedge, which basically activates auto wedge, which is basically our one click solution for those people who didn't want to go through all the clicks to set up wedge. In fact, it works with everything. In fact, we can jump to box and every cut we do just automatically gets depth. The interesting thing about auto depth is we also add the parameter where you can flip the active edge being calculated. So by turning that on, you can actually have the longest edge that's been calculated be reversed. So instead of the shortest edge, it's actually going to go for a slightly different one, allowing you some slightly more interesting results. It's something that will require some time to experiment with, but also just keep in mind that auto depth is a play off of release lock, laser cut, and a myriad of other behaviors inside of box cutter all working together due to them, you know, finally becoming unified. So there are some things that could occur. For example, um, in case you're not familiar with release lock, there are a myriad of parameters that are associated with it that can be brought up just by shift clicking the release lock icon. We can turn off auto depth for just a moment and go in here and by turning on all of them, you can activate this mode that we like to call God Ray, where it basically shoots through the mesh, but it's still live and you can see through it. And this was something that was added in one of our previous releases, but auto depth is just a play off of it where we just try to calculate the amount of depth based off of the longer or shorter edge of the two. But we hope that this should make the detailing process a lot easier for those who are wanting to just get in, just cut some quick greeble noise and then extract it and use it other places. But this is one of those things that I'm proud to announce as part of the latest box cutter. And here I am extracting it, repeating it, just one click as I release, it's just done, allowing me to rapidly repeat these details over and over. So not long ago, a question was posed to me that I thought deserved an answer, and that was, how do I use box cutter to cut a two centimeter hole? So I'm happy to announce that that has been resolved in this version. Let's press D, jump over a circle, and let's just left click and right click in order to just pause this. If we were to press control D, we can go inside the helper and you'll notice that there's now a parameter area for dimensions where you can go in and set the diameter of a circle in addition to the X, Y scaling of the circle. And you can even adjust the Z to adjust how much depth you're getting in there. The interesting thing about diameter is let's set this to just 0.23, get them unified again, is that we can go in here and type in two CM and now we've created a two centimeter cut. And by clicking to apply, we've now applied this cut and we can get in here and look at this. In fact, just to confirm the size that we were going for, let's use a mod scroll, bring it back and use the hard ops accu shape in order to just jump up to centimeters through scroll. And we can see that this is precisely two centimeters on both the length and the height. So we just want to provide an answer to users for dealing with this. Of course, dimensions extends to everything. So you can draw a box press control D, get in here and just hold control and roll over these in order to adjust the values numerically and even roll over to Z in order to begin adding depth. So it's our first steps towards dealing with dimensions inside of box cutter. Internally, I always say, you know, we definitely don't want to turn this into a CAD tool. That's not what we set out to do. Our goal is to make modeling more entertaining, not turn it into what we are running away from. So let's click to apply this. An interesting thing as well is that even if you were to use a shape like Ngon, we'll just draw this. And I keep drawing shapes with Ngon just dirty like you see me doing. However, I can of course bring up the Gridfinite grid and just you know use first point snapping. But just letting you know that you also have the ability to adjust the scale of Ngon and any shape for that matter 
while you're inside of box cutter. In fact, let's press D, jump over to custom. We'll just draw our box cutter logo. And then of course, we're able to just hold shift or control and just roll over to parameters in order to adjust them. And then spacebar in order to apply. On the whiteboard, one concept I was adamant about having someday was something called line box extrude. I believe that was what it was called. It might have been something along those lines. However, if we alt scroll up, we can jump to line box and here we are just drawing a box that's being oriented by a line. So the goal of this tool was to allow users to draw boxes, but have them oriented in advance to a system with getting them placed. So instead of dealing with the box orientation being auto calculate off of the normals or the longest edge or whatever system that you're utilizing, you would just be able to just draw lines and have them at angles and then turn them into an extrusion. However, there were some limitations to this particular workflow. In fact, here I'm going to draw a line box. However, instead of doing a cut, I'm gonna press Y and perform a extraction. And now that we perform this extraction, let's draw out this extraction. And we see that this extraction, in addition to its butterflying, which we will be talking about, it also has this orientation issue that's pretty much the same as what we took it from. So while we're able to move it around and drag it through, this is definitely not the way that we want extractions with line box to behave. So I'm gonna right click and cancel that and we'll press Control C to copy this shape and we'll minimize Blender, make a new file, delete the cube, Control V. We'll even go in here and Control click manage to just remove everything that's irrelevant and we'll alt scroll up to line box and we're gonna perform that same extraction again, this time utilizing 717. So notice that while I hold control, I'm still able to adjust the box after the fact, which is something that's new to this version of line boxes as well. However, notice that after extracting this, I'm able to draw a line and then repeat it. In fact, it didn't go through that time. Let's try it one more time. It's determined to make a full of me. We press Y, it's been extracted. Now we're inside of line custom, and here we are drawing the shape out straight. So we're able to basically repeat it whatever orientation that we want. You might also notice that there's some extra fat at the end as a result of the algorithm that we use. When it comes to extraction, there's multiple ways to extract. However, in these cases, we might want to filter out only the Boolean. So we can go here turn off surface extract, which will extract everything that's basically under the um, shape. And we draw it out again. This time we press Y. And now whenever we draw the shape out, notice that we're only drawing what it took as a Boolean filter. So there's multiple ways that you can approach line box. I'm just showing you one of the ways that we ran it through the test scenarios in order to judge its success or failure. So now we're able to draw this shape out repeat it anywhere that we want. In fact, because we extracted it as a line, we're able to use custom as a line in order to draw it, which is another new addition of box cutter. If we press D, we can jump over to circle and we can press control D and you'll notice that there's now a new option for draw line, which is the promotion of line box. We couldn't have a line box mode for everything because it is a line that draws a box. So it's promotion to draw line only made sense to me, I guess, but we're able to draw a circle out using a line. We can switch over to box, activate draw line, and then of course draw a box using a line at any angle that we need to, just in case. And in addition to this, it also supports wedge, so we can press W to wedge, and it will wedge in accordance with the angle of line that we drew. It goes even further than that. So now that line box has been properly integrated and unified with all of our systems, it means that if we were to draw a line box and we press V, we can now array it on the local axis based on the line that was drawn. This was something that was not previously available with the previous version of Linebox, and we saw it as a form of limitation. In fact, if we bring back up the previous version of Blender, we can alt scroll to Linebox, and we will just draw a box and press V, and we see this actually using the world axis, which can get you some rather undesirable results. So this was something that we wanted to rectify in the latest version of box cutter. So now you're able to draw a shape, get it positioned, and on top of that, even while wedging, you can press C to recall previous cutters, and these cutters should actually align 
to the area that you've drawn out with line box. We saw some previous cutters not show up properly because of the angles they were drawn. However, when it comes to standard shapes being used with the line box system, you are able to recall them and they'll be positioned properly as you're seeing here. And then in addition to that, there's a draw dot that you can grab after the fact in order to perform adjustments. You can shift drag the dot in the center in order to move the shape around freely. You can press R in order to rotate it. So this unification is something that should be good for everyone. And we're hoping that users get into it because a lot of work went into it. In fact, I'm trying to set my rotation angle to something smaller so we can get this better position. And this actually shows our next thing that I hadn't yet talked about. And that is the ability to use the other dot with shift in order to perform a taper. But we'll be getting back into that later. For now, we'll be shift clicking this dot in order to move it. And then we can click and apply it. But just letting you know that Linebox has went through some serious enhancements and now is supported in everything in the form of draw line, which is a new type of draw type that I feel should probably be here, but we'll more than likely be addressing that in the future. In a previous version of Box Cutter, we introduced the idea of having support for Custom Cutter to use text, where you could select a text object and then just draw it on an object and actually use it as a cutter. In fact, you were able to also draw it at a horizontal resolution and use something like Shift tilde or Shift R in order to move it around, and then Shift click the dot in order to move it. And this was kind of where we left off with Custom Cutter last time. However, this time I'm proud to announce that we now support curves and SVGs. So if we insert a curve, I just want to let it be known that this sort of curve is not supported uh, since there's no geometry on the inside. So it does require a manifold curve in order to be used. So here I am under the curve setting, changing it to 2D, giving it a fill mode. And now I can actually press D, switch over to custom, press C. And by selecting this custom cutter, you know, let's jump out of draw line we can now draw this shape. In fact, I also want to change this to center draw mode. And we could actually select this curve and do something like press V, change it to vector RZ90. And now if we draw this shape out, we're drawing a box. We can select this point, right click, fill it, and begin playing with the radius if you're using curve tools, which is built into Blender. And we're able to just continue working in this in this strange fashion. So it's something that I don't expect to catch on with everyone, but it is something that was on the to-do list that we wanted to mop off and that was supporting SVGs inside of Blender. It gets even more interesting where, you know, with curves you can shift D duplicate and use them as booleans on the inside to a limited extent. You can't do like fluid unions or anything yet, but it is interesting to play with a shape and just see it take place with the uh, custom cutter. In fact, I'm not even having to press C in order to remake this the custom cutter. I'm just going in, modifying it in edit mode, and then selecting this shape and going back and just performing extrusions with this. In addition to being able to just draw shapes out, you can of course hold shift in order to draw shapes proportionally. And now you'll notice that the butterfly effect isn't happening like you saw with the previous version of box cutter. If we were to bring that version of box cutter back up, I can draw this out and you'll see that let's uh, shift tilde. There's the bot, there's the uh, legendary butterfly effect happening. Uh, let's pause this, let's rotate it. And we draw from here. And you know, now that I'm actually trying to trigger this butterfly effect, we can see it's not happening, making a fool out of me, but just letting you know, that we have done everything in our power to try to reduce the amount of butterfly happening whenever you're drawing with custom cutters. So if you're trying to draw it out proportionally using shift, that should no longer be a problem. Another example that I wanna show using the previous version of Blender with custom cutter is this. So we press D and let's just actually alt scroll down to box. So I'm just going to draw a box and then I'm going to draw a circle and then I'm going to go back to box and we'll draw a box around it and we'll press T and perform a cut here. Press W to turn it into a wedge. Oh wait, we're using the previous version of box cutter. We have to actually jump over to wedge to do that. So now we see why we would actually want wedge on W for everything. 
we can alt scroll back down to box. And at this point, I'm going to perform an extraction. So now that this is extracted, I can draw this shape here and we see the butterfly effect for me trying to, you know, basically get the shape rotated the way that I want. But the easiest way to deal with this is left click, right click to pause it and just rotate it around 90 degrees and then shift drag this dot to where we need. The next struggle for us is actually getting this to extrude on the Z. So this was one of our limitations with Custom Cutter was that if you extrude it on the Z, there is no way to actually deal with this. So as a result, you would have to be looking at it from the side and just kind of eyeball things in order to ensure that you're getting a proportional cylinder whenever you perform this cut. So we're just going to undo that and I'm gonna Control C copy this and we'll minimize this window. Control N, make a new window. We'll press X and Control V and using hard ops, we're just gonna control click manage to get rid of any cutters showing and put them in their proper collections. And now we're just going to draw a box around this area and press Y. And so everything so far so good, except now we're able to draw this. There's no butterfly effect. However, I do contemplate how we could have some sort of auto rotate with custom cutters on the fly in case you need to adjust the rotation without a keystroke, but that's just something I contemplate in the back of my mind. The next thing is now that we have our shape position, let's say we actually want to get the proportional cut to be precise. So by holding shift, we're able to just bring that down and place it exactly where we need to at the right depth. Currently, I also find that this interferes a little bit with uh, shift to live. So I also left click, right click in order to apply it. But this is something that we'll be rectifying in the future as well. But now I'm able to repeat custom cutters proportionally and correctly without any difficulty. And this is something that I've long awaited inside of Box Cutter as a way to kind of put the final kibosh on Custom Cutter and have it finally be the way that it's supposed to be because these are all the things that I find that will make your lives a lot easier, especially if you're repeating railing and you want it to be repeated at the exact size scale that you extracted it from, or at least proportionally on the X and the Y. So just letting you know that that is now a thing. In addition to all of this, um, I believe I already went over the fact that if you're in custom cutter, you can switch to draw line and now draw a custom cutter at any angle. And by holding shift, you can actually constrain it to the X and Y, allowing you to get an accurate draw proportional to the extraction that you initially received. And then just by holding shift, you're able to extrude it to the precise amount of depth. And then always you can just press R, rotate this thing to get it exactly where you need. And then if you need even finer adjustment, instead of modifying the parameters, I'm just gonna shift it to live and just rotate it manually in order to get this shape but just letting you know that a lot of work has been done with Custom Cutter to make it even better than ever. And now you should find that using it is a more pleasant experience resulting in less hiccups, but definitely better shapes overall. So here we are in 716 or 717.6, and we're going to draw a box and left mouse, right mouse. And we have our bevel dot that we can drag to adjust our bevel. We have our extrusion dot we can drag to extrude, and we have our draw dot. The purpose of this last update was actually to add an ingon draw dot. So if we draw an ingon shape, we could see that there is not a draw dot for ingon. And this was something that was a bug as a result of our unification not being entirely complete. However, if we drag it into extrude, we now see that we have an extrusion dot where we can begin making adjustments to our drawing um, post, you know, extrusion. So. This was something, and also if we bring it back into 2D, we now see that the dot is showing. However, this is something that we wanted to rectify. Of course, the bevel dot is always there for you. And with custom, we also wanted there to be a draw dot. So there's no need for a bevel dot because custom is just its own beast. However, the ability to extrude and adjust the drawing after the fact, and even hold shift while you're in this mode to adjust the drawing, and maybe even hold alt and shift in order to draw centrally from the center point of which you define the cut, is something that we found to be essential. However, we wanted to expand on that even more. So if we jump into the latest box cutter, we're just gonna draw with line box and we see that line box now has a dot for bevel as it might've always had, but it also now has a dot for draw that if you hold control, you can now basically redraw the shape on the fly. And so even now, while it got a little weird with the shading when we stretched it a bit, we're still able to extrude this and the draw dot is still there for us. And we can still use this to scale the shape to whatever we need to on the fly, even rotate it to something more logical, pretending as if we started off from a box. But we can also press D, jump over to Ngon. This time I'll use Gridfinite Grid. 
and we'll just begin drawing a box cutter shape. And now we see that there is a draw dot in the 2D state of Ngon, meaning that we can now drag this to begin adjusting the shape. We can hold Alt to begin adjusting it centrally from where we started. We could hold Shift in order to scale this out proportionally while keeping everything uniform. And then we just let go and we can still get in here and drag the dot to extrude and drag this dot to bevel. So that is actually the first level of improvements we want to make with box cutter. The next level of improvements I want to talk about is that if you were to shift drag this dot, you will now taper the object. So if you're in pause mode and you're needing to taper, you can now shift drag this dot in order to perform a taper very quickly. If you shift drag this dot, you will now be able to form an extrusion, however, or you'll be able to perform a solidification. However, if you want to remove solidification, you'll need to press T, T, and then you're able to remove it and apply this as a cut. So just to recap, just letting you know, we'll draw a custom shape, right mouse, left mouse, and we have our draw dot now that when we hold shift, we're able to move. We're able to now extrude it, and you can now shift drag your extrusion dot in order to taper, and just clicking and applying, and we're done, reducing the need for even the taper hotkey. With this update 717, I'm also happy to announce that we also now support space mice inside of Boss Cutter. So you'll be able to just perform a draw, pause it, get in, zoom directly on the surface, see exactly what you're doing, grab your dots, and use all of this with the space mouse at the same time if you so desire. Last but not least, under Hard Ops in the opt ins area, you can turn on Box Cutter notifications. However, as of hardops underscore 29, if you enable notifications, you'll also have a conversion area where you can choose if your dimensions show up on screen as centimeters, inches, feet, miles, whatever the unit case that you need. I actually like to keep it at centimeters so that whenever I'm drawing, I can see centimeters via the box header notifications down here at the bottom of the screen. And of course, keep in mind, you can adjust the dimensions just by going in and adjusting the parameters here for a more specific shape size. So in closing, I just want to say that quite a bit goes into box cutter compared to hard ops. I mean, a lot goes into both of these tools, but box cutter especially is one that we never ever put down or stop talking about because there's just so much that we have to complete in order to get to the things that, you know, I really want to get to you know, all the time I'll have a conversation with the team and I'll say, Hey, I wish we could do this. And the reply will be, well, we will need to do this first and this first and this first. And so I'll just add all these things to a list and we'll slowly begin working towards accomplishing those goals to eventually get to something that, you know, I'll just stop mentioning for months. And so this update is a culmination of a lot of requests that I've had for various things, finally being unified all into one nice package. So, while it's easy to take something for granted like the alignment system and line box for array and whatnot for granted, it definitely required a complete overhaul of everything under the hood in order to get everything unified to the point that Lattice could be able to wedge, that custom could wedge, that custom would be able to um, extrude proportionally on the Z holding a circle formation. You know, a lot of these user cases are so small and so minute, but I'll become rather attached to them and ensuring that they work because I feel that, you know, if we can do one thing well, then that's at least a good foundation for us to jump off of and begin expanding. But I do hope that users enjoy this latest update. A lot of work has went into it. Shout out to everyone involved, Proxy, Loof, just amazing work. Sometimes uh, I feel bad, you know, dragging these things on and on in a quest to obtain perfection however as i always say you know perfection is unobtainable but the quest to go for it is definitely entertaining so i hope everybody enjoys this latest update and while it seems like there's a lot that's going on with it we can't wait to show you what's going on next time